from Atlanta, and we're here today at the Centers for Disease Control asking your questions about Ebola. And it comes just as we learn the other nurse infected is now being rushed out of Dallas, too. Nina Pham was the first American infected with Ebola here at home, tonight being flown to Maryland for treatment. It comes just 24 hours after the other nurse, Amber Vinson, was airlifted out of Dallas to Emory Hospital here in Atlanta, on that gurney, then walking up those stairs into the plane. Tonight, we wanted to know, are America's hospitals really ready? A nurse inside that Dallas hospital now speaking out. And we asked the CDC, should that nurse with an elevated temperature have been allowed to get on that plane? Tonight, the CDC revealing to me that both nurses are now being treated with experimental drugs, just as that Dallas hospital where both nurses were infected with Ebola is now admitting the nursing staff received, quote, no actual training on how to care for Ebola patients. On Capitol Hill today, the CDC under intense scrutiny, just weeks after telling the American people our hospitals were ready. We're open to ideas for what we can do to keep Americans as safe as possible. Those two nurses in isolation tonight, almost three weeks after their patient, Thomas Eric Duncan, walked into a Dallas hospital. He was sent home the first time, even though he had a 103-degree fever. Later, that first nurse, Nina Pham, diagnosed with Ebola. The second nurse, Amber Vinson, had traveled back home to Cleveland to prepare for her wedding, visiting this bridal store. She called the CDC, reporting a slight fever of 99.5. The CDC does not stop her from getting on the plane, flying back to Dallas with more than 130 other passengers. And now the ripple effect across this country tonight. In Ohio, seven people under voluntary quarantine. In Cleveland, the airport scrubbed. Three schools closed today. So we traveled to the CDC right here in Atlanta today, inside the Emergency Operations Center, to ask the questions. In front of the room, the Ebola map. You can see the red up on the map here in West Africa, the Ebola cases. There's red up in Spain as well, reflecting the concern there. And we wanted to know where on the board is the CDC tracking Dallas. And you can actually see uh, they've added a, a small map here of the United States. And in Dallas, they have 23 workers on the ground right now. In an ABC News exclusive, we talked to Dr. Stuart Nickel, one of the leading scientists in the world on Ebola here at the CDC. He has worked in these labs, the most dangerous viruses, including Ebola, locked behind concrete walls and multiple layers of elaborate biometric security, requiring iris scans and fingerprinting to even get close. Inside, scientists wearing these orange suits, filtered air supplied through those hoses. When they leave, they take a chemical shower still inside that suit, every step meticulous. We asked Dr. Nickel about American hospitals and their teams. When we're told that American hospitals are ready, we had our first patient, Mr. Duncan, and now two nurses are sick from that hospital alone. Does that tell us that American hospitals really aren't as ready as we were told? I, I think um, the American hospitals are ready uh, at the minimum level, you know, so you put in place very good systems, but you know, not a perfect system. But some would say that this isn't even a good system if you have one patient and already two nurses are sick. Do we have any idea how they might have contracted this? Um, I, I've not been involved directly in the investigation in Dallas. In fact, tonight, even that Dallas hospital saying it is still a mystery how their nurses got sick, apologizing, acknowledging, quote, mistakes had been made. And about the second nurse who boarded that plane. Should that nurse have been allowed to get on that plane? with 99 degree temperature, a slight fever, as we've been told. Should she have gotten on the plane in the first place? Um, the, in hindsight, uh, you would say perhaps that she should not have got on the plane. Um, but she did still, ask the CDC, right? I, I was not a part, again, I was not a part of that discussion. ABC News learning she did make that call to the CDC. And with two nurses now sick, is there any treatment? ready for patients in America. Do we have anything to treat Ebola? The experimental drug, there's, there's have, none left. Yeah, yeah. There, uh, there Ken Brantley's are, giving his antibodies, but again, he's one man. Yeah. So what is there to treat this? Uh, these nurses are receiving uh, some, some products uh, that may help uh, with the infection. Some experimental treatment right now? Yes. Experimental treatment for those nurses, including Nina Pham, the first nurse, and she'll be on a flight tonight as she gets moved to this exclusive look inside the plane that will take her to Maryland. This airtight exoskeleton, as they call it, keeping her isolated, sealing her inside with these specialized zippers. And they revealed to us the extraordinary steps they will take to disinfect the plane afterward. It involves pumping 30% pure hydrogen peroxide, which is turned in 
from a liquid to a fog throughout the system for hours on end where everything is sterilized. After that, everything inside ripped out, the stretcher, the seat belts, the lights, stripped and incinerated, and then taken to a federal landfill. Our time at the CDC here in Atlanta today. And as we come on the air tonight, there is a new development about Amber Vincent, that second nurse who boarded that plane from Cleveland back to Dallas. And so I want to bring in our chief medical editor, Dr. Richard Besser, who is live in Dallas tonight. And Rich, you're learning that she might have shown symptoms uh, before we even knew about it. That's right, David. The CDC just told me that as part of their investigation, they learned that Amber Vincent was already feeling unwell on Friday before she headed up up to Cleveland. So they're going to expand their investigation and track down every passenger who was on the plane going up there just as part of an abundance of caution. That's going to widen this circle, Rich, because we know that she went to that bridal shop and other stops along the way uh, after showing symptoms, as you're reporting here tonight. And, Rich, I wanted to ask you about something else the CDC told me there, the experimental treatment being given to these two nurses. We had not heard about that yet. That's right. This is big news. We hadn't heard about experimental drugs in these two nurses. But, you know, we've talked about it. All you can really do for an Ebola patient is provide fluid and, and nutrition. So they're going to try any experimental drugs to try and improve survival for Ebola.